The iPhone 15 and 15 Pro launched a couple of months back with a host of new changes and features. There's a new USB-C port, new video capabilities, gaming and software updates, amongst other things. And with all that came a bunch of new accessories. I've been trying out a slew of new products since these phones came out, looking for the best options out there to not only facilitate some of the new stuff that showed up with the iPhones this year, but also that helps to address some of their flaws. Some products have been great, some not so much. So today I wanna to dive into my top iPhone 15 and 15 Pro accessories. I found them to be extremely helpful and useful and hopefully they'll be for you as well. So if you're looking for ideas on how to level up your iPhone 15 or your iPhone 15 Pro, stick around and let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Finding the right accessories for an iPhone can be a tough thing to do sometimes. Because iPhones are so popular and you can do so much with them, there are hundreds if not thousands of different products made for them and it can be hard to know where to even start. What I've tried to do this year is focus on the features that I would like to use or that I know other folks might be interested in and find the best products that I can for those particular use cases, and that's why we're here today. I'm gonna go over 10 products that I think are all fantastic for accomplishing certain things with the iPhone. Like I said, some are gonna enable or assist with some of the new features, address some design flaws, but some of them I find are just awesome products. I will link everything in the description below, but enough of that, let's just get right into the first item on the list the Zyk 2-in-1 wireless MagSafe charger. This has a metallic gray and chrome design on the MagSafe portion of the charger and charges at 15 watts where the bottom works at 10 watts on devices like phones that can charge wirelessly or five watts with things like earbuds or AirPods. There are an abundance of these types of stands out there, but there are a couple of reasons why this one stands out to me over what else is out there, no pun intended. One, it enables a new standby mode feature on iOS with an iPhone 14 Pro or 15 Pro where it turns your iPhone into a a little bedside clock or calendar and widget viewer. It's nice to get some personalized info to show to you if it's on your nightstand or desk, but the second reason and the most important thing in my opinion is how it charges. There's been quite a bit of discourse recently about the iPhone getting hot. Admittedly, I don't find this to be a huge issue myself, but for years there have been people concerned with MagSafe charging too hot, and this stand does have a solution for that. You can see it's got a little fan button on the base of the stand, and if you click that, a fan will actually start blowing right behind the MagSafe adapter, which keeps your phone much cooler than it would on a regular charger. That really helps squash any concerns about your phone getting too hot via MagSafe charging. And while we're on the topic of power and batteries, let's say you're away from home or your desk, obviously you're not gonna haul a charger like this around with you everywhere. And that's where this little guy comes in. This is the ESR Halo Lock Mini Kickstand Wireless Power Bank. And the great thing about this, outside of just being a regular power bank that charges through MagSafe, is it's got this little kickstand on the back. So again, you can get that standby mode view if you want and it's perfect if you're watching content on your phone or FaceTiming with someone. With this being MagSafe, it just snaps into place, but another benefit to this is if I don't wanna use MagSafe or I wanna charge something else wired, I can use a USB-C port on the side that's usually used to charge this power bank battery and use it to charge other devices as well. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, so you'll get between two and three full charges on an iPhone. It's easy to pack around with you and great if you're out of the house a lot or maybe you're camping or you get the occasional power outage like I do. If wireless charging just isn't your thing and you prefer to charge wired, one thing that I cannot recommend enough is a good GAN charger like the Ugreen Nexo 140 watt one that I have here. I sometimes have a hard time buying some of this stuff because it's hard to see the value up front. I've got a bunch of different power bricks around here. So initially my thought was that this isn't gonna make much of a difference but this is one accessory that's probably turned into the one that I use the most. Not only can I charge my iPhone with this at the full 27 watts output, but I can also charge any modern MacBook with the same brick, a ton of Android phones, and pretty much anything to be honest. Basically how that charger works is it will handshake with whatever device you have connected to it and determine the fastest available charging speed and charge through that spec. It just gets rid of fumbling around trying to figure out what charger goes with what device and I can use it to charge things like that power bank too, which makes it extremely versatile. It also comes with a very nice braided cable that's a little bit longer than the one that you get with the iPhone box. And speaking of that iPhone cable, that's something that you might want to consider swapping out for other reasons. So the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro released with USB-C this year, both with a number of new things that you can do with them outside of what existed on previous models. On the iPhone 15 Pro, the transfer speed on that port is 10 gigabits per second, which is 20 times faster than on previous models and the regular 15. But both the 15 and the 15 Pro have high bandwidth display port compatibility. So things like support for 4K displays, 
but there's one big problem. The cable that comes with these iPhones is only good for low bandwidth transfers and charging. In order to get the most out of that USB-C port on either of these devices, you're gonna wanna grab a 10 gigabit USB-C cable. And when you're looking for a cable, there's a couple of things that I recommend. First, get one with the transfer speed stamped on it because chances are you've probably got a heap of USB-C cables. And this is an easy way to identify the speed that your cable is good for. And two, find a decent length cable for whatever it is that you wanna use it for. For example, the iPhone 15 and the 15 Pro can be used with a monitor or a TV that accepts USB-C or through an HDMI adapter and you can watch Netflix or other services in full resolution, which is great if you don't have a smart TV or if you're in a hotel and you don't wanna sign into your account on their devices. If I'm doing something like that, I'll want a longer cable. This fast gear one that I have is six feet long. It has the transfer speed stamped on it and it's thick and braided. And I've been using a few different versions of these same cables for years without any issues. Now, if I wanna do something like hook up an external SSD and transfer files back and forth or record video from my phone to the external drive, I'm probably gonna want something under a foot long because I don't want cables hanging everywhere but luckily most external drives like this one come with pretty short cables. This drive is a Samsung T7 and if you're planning on using an external SSD with your iPhone 15 or specifically the 15 Pro this is likely one of the best options out there. I generally would avoid using an external drive if you've just got the regular 15 because the speeds are quite slow but if you've got the 15 Pro, the T7 will match the 10 gigabit per second speeds on it, and you get outstanding transfer speeds in macOS on your Mac as well. The version that I have here is one terabyte, so if I plan on using this to record a lot of video for my phone, this is more than enough space to keep me busy for a while. Not only is this quick and reliable, but it's also small and lightweight and easy to pack around with you. I've seen some people strapping these onto their phones to keep them in place if they're filming with them or using them for more storage, but what I like to do with them is pick up these little MagSafe adapters and stick them onto my SSD and then I can just pop these off and on and I don't need to worry about clips and whatnot. These magnets are also fantastic if you've got a case that you really like that doesn't have MagSafe or other accessories. Speaking of which, I have a couple of cases here that I wanna bring up that work well with all this stuff. But before we dig into that, if you do wanna learn more about how to get the most out of your camera or anything creative really, Skillshare is a fantastic tool just for that. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of online classes and members. So whether you wanna learn about iPhone filmmaking or something completely different like web development, graphic design, and a host of other topics, you can find it on Skillshare. What I personally really like about this platform over others is they've got courses that are in-depth deep dives that are hours long, and ones that are super focused, specific topics that are just minutes long. So you've got multiple different ways to learn, even if you don't have a ton of time. I've used them in the past to learn more about making these videos. MKBHD has a course on here that I've checked out and I've taken multiple courses on here regarding color grading, and it's definitely helped me level up my skill set. Personally, I think learning is so important throughout every stage of your life, and it's partly why I've been able to do and experience so many different things in mine which is why I was very excited to partner with Skillshare and provide something exclusive to the folks who support this channel. The first 500 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So be sure to check that out and check out some of the courses and see how you like it because there is a ton of value there. All right, so bringing this back around, I wanna talk about a couple of cases, but let me just prefix this by saying that I'm not super into all the ins and outs surrounding them. I usually just find something that I like and that works for me and stick with that. But there are a couple that I wanted to shout out in particular because they seem to work best with most of the products on this list. The first one is this clear Spigen Ultra hybrid case. And what I like about this case is it still shows the actual design of your phone and it is anti-yellowing. So you're not gonna use it for a week and make everything look gross. It's very light and combined with the lighter weight of the iPhone 15 Pro this year, it is more comfortable to hold and the magnets stick really well, which is something that I have struggled with on a lot of other case brands and having these accessories stick to them. The best part is they're super affordable and they I have some pretty cool patterns if you want something outside of the clear look. If you want something that's a little bit heavier duty, maybe with a solid color tone and a touch stronger magnet, I still prefer this Rhino Shield solid suit case. These are definitely a little bit more expensive, but I love the way that the buttons feel and with the strong magnets make it ideal if you're connecting things like external SSDs or wallets or pop sockets. As far as pop sockets are concerned, I think those are worth mentioning because I know a lot of people love them. I don't personally use one, but my wife won't use a phone without one and they make some pretty nice MagSafe ones these days. I like the MagSafer specifically as opposed to the ones that you have to stick onto your phone with adhesive because this way you can still charge your phone wirelessly 
or pop on and off other magnetic accessories easily. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Pop sockets do give you an easier or more secure way to hold your phone and you can use them like a little kickstand as well. They used to only have these big bulky MagSafe options, but the one that I have here is much smaller and easier on the eyes. You can buy all different tops and swap them off and on, which is cool for customization. But if we're talking about customization, there's one product for the iPhone 15 and the 15 Pro that I love more than anything else. This is a Backbone mobile gaming controller and this works both with iPhones and Android phones. And the great thing about this is you can just plug it into your iPhone and it just works right out of the gate with no setup. I much prefer using this rather than on-screen touch controls, specifically when I'm testing out phones on the channel. And beyond being good for games in the App Store and Apple Arcade, this is also excellent for cloud gaming as well. I can fire up Starfield or other games on Xbox Cloud and play them whether I'm at home or traveling. And to me, this is just a much more enjoyable way to play games. The iPhone 15 Pro is a much more advanced GPU this year and more AAA titles coming forward very soon and the more Apple dives into mobile gaming and bringing additional console games to the iPhone the more value the Backbone one has in my opinion. The gaming experience can also be stepped up with good audio and for that and really any kind of media consumption it's hard not to recommend the AirPods Pros. I've been using the second generation Pro since they launched and since I've tried out a bunch of different earbuds but I always come back to these. I know they're kind of pricey but the experience is unmatched in my opinion. They have amazing sound and the wireless connection is the best out of any set of headphones that I've tried. I use these for listening to podcasts when I'm doing things around the house, when I'm running, both when it's sunny and in the pouring rain, and they're still going strong. They have fantastic noise cancellation, different adaptive modes, and quite a few features that I could spend a long time talking about. That's probably a topic for another video, but the important thing is, is that they work really well and they enhance the overall iPhone 15 experience, as do all the accessories that I've gone over today. I know not everything here is going to apply to everyone, but I hope you can find some value in here. I'd love to know what you guys think of these products. Is there anything in here that you love that's on this list, or maybe that you know of that you'd prefer over some of the stuff that I just mentioned? Let me know in the comments down below. That is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you want to see more tech-related content or attempt to bake a cake with me blindfolded, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.